Yeah, what's up guys, Shadi here. And today we have a postcom, a Pokemon showdown postcom, something I haven't done in a while. Well, my PPM is just more, of course, postcoms, but not on showdown. Uh, and this is a team that I built in like 5 minutes because Galate dropped to NU for stupid reasons, because it's not appearing in RU and in the team builder. And a lot of people didn't realize the thing was RU now, so there's really low usage and we have an NU now, and that's beautiful because it's fucking borderline broken. Uh, borderline, not necessarily broken. Um, and yeah, we'll go over the team in a second, but my opponent, um, shortly after the battle started, people like Queen of Love Discs and Jamvet joined. So I was like, okay, this guy, this guy probably knows what he's doing, because Queen of Love Discs and um, Jamvet are pretty good players, like really good players. So I was like, he's probably one of those two, so. Uh, put my pre pulled my prediction pants all the way up over my head and smashed my balls with it and yeah <laughs> uh, The team that I built is specially offensive sub bulk up Glade with Grand Punch and Knockoff and Enough speed towards speed uninvested Zatu and Uxie just because I can get up sub on them as they try to T-wave me or toxic me or whatever and Then proceed to set up on them because psychic does never break my sub unless they're offensive in which case Rip. Um, I can still take it so <laughs> um, next up, I wanted something that can lure in Quaxa because Glade doesn't really want to take that on. I mean, it probably can PP stall it, but I'm not. I'm not about that life. Um, and I chose Primate because it gets Seed Bomb and Quaxa is switching. <laughs> uh, Scarf uh, with both combat, Dutan Sonic, and of course Seed Bomb. Scarf Primate was shit. It's weak as fuck, as you will see in the battle, but it it does the job kind of ish maybe. Um, <laughs> and yeah. I might change the set still to like fist plate or something. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see. Then we have special defensive right on with stealth rocks, earthquake, rock blast, and roar. Uh, I have a bit of defense investment. I think I hit like 200 special defense, so 300 with a violet. And then I have a bit of defense just because I kind of like fizzle defense on the team. After I put, put the next member on there, uh, Mantine, I want defogger. Um, I want something that fares up decently well with or pairs up decently well with right on. And Mantine does that, has huge special bulk, it takes on the majority of Rhydon's weaknesses. Decently well, there's a freeze dry user, which looking at this team, I'm really weak to freeze dry, but hey, hey, go late, hopefully. Um, <laughs> I'm also really physically offensive, but hey, it's just, it's just what happens. Uh, Mantine is Scald, Toxic, Defog, and Air Slash. Uh, I like Air Slash just because Galate is around now, uh, it just makes it even more viable. Uh, because then you can, you know, break the sub and stuff. And also hits grass types. I don't want ice beam. It hits fighting types in general. So yeah. Then I wanted Fletchner because I was kind of weak to fighting types, and Fletchner just revenge kills those with ease. Also grass types were a problem at this point. Um, it deals with Galate. It all kills it unless it has a bulk up up, in which case it still does a shitload. So yeah. Um, Fletchner is just standard dot max attack with enough speed towards speed. I think unvest or not unvested. Max speed pawn yet or something. I think that's what it is. Um, SD acro will always bruised. And next up, and last but not least, we have Defensive Wild Plume with Sludge Bomb, Giga Drain, Synthesis, and Moonblast. Uh, Moonblast, of course, once again for fighting types, but most importantly for Special Defensive, Rest Talk, Malamar. I have enough Special Attack EVs to 3 hit KO that thing, um, if it's a Special Defensive set. Um, and Wild Plume is just so good on this team. I'm glad I put it on there. <laughs> I was considering other things, but. It just fits so well, deals with so many things, it helps deal with Quaxa, which of course you are there for and you can toxic it, but still. Um, and opposing grass types and stuff and the things and the stuff and the things and fighting types, again. Uh, opponent's team, he has Galate, which is scary because I'm not, I don't know, I don't have a straight up counter to it, so it's annoying. Caracosta, which is really, really cool, I like Caracosta. Uh, Zatu, which Galate can set up on unless it has speed investment with T-Wave, that would be really annoying, but I can still set up on it, kind of. Uh, Kangaskhan, if it has Aqua Tail, is a huge threat to my team. Um, I just have to hope it doesn't. And uh, Lantern is also kind of annoying as soon as Vileplume dies. And Lilligan is not too big of a threat unless it's um, sashed with HP Rock, because otherwise Fletcher just always revenge kills it 100% of the time. So, uh, let's get into battle. Of course, I lead with Prime because it's my Scarfer and just easy U turn. He leads with Lilligan, probably expecting Ride On. Um, easy U turn for me as he goes into Zatu. I get a crit, that's fine. And since, like I said, my Glide has speed investment towards speed unvested Zatu, which I, I assume this is, so I can get a sub on it. And nope, he has speed investment and T Wave, and I get paralyzed. 
that's gonna be really annoying throughout the battle, but hey. Uh, I still get behind the sub, which is nice, because like I said, I know Zato cannot break it. So you can just bulk up all the way. Not all the way, but a bit. Uh, bulk up once. And since he doesn't have lefties, I was pretty sure he was uh, Cobalberry. But I went for knockoff anyways, because what else would I do? Uh, second Psychic breaks my sub, and I go for another sub. That's what I meant. Uh, because I knew another Psychic would break my sub. So yeah, I'm behind the sub again. I can fire off a free knockoff at this point. Um, and even though there's a Cobalberry, I'm not attack invested. And that does a lot. So that's pretty cool. Um, he can choose if he wants to roost and still take a shit off from a, uh, from a knockoff or just break my sub. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, which is his better play in the end. And he breaks my sub, but goes down. So now he brings in his own Galate. I'm not wanting to stay in here really. Um, so I just go into Fletchina, expecting, like, a, I don't know, a Brain Punch, which I could live or something. Ugh, I don't know why I did that. I can live every hit pretty much that it would throw at an opposing Galate. Um, so yeah, I just make the safe play and go for acrobatics because I know it will do a shitload to Galate. Uh, Karakosa comes in, that's to be expected, but it doesn't... Yeah, you can just get, he can get up his rocks here, which is kind of annoying because, of course, I have Fletchina and Mantine. But I can defog uh, with Mantine on something, potentially, hopefully. Um, so bring in Valplume because it's a safe switch into Karakosa. And fire off a Sludge Bomb, expecting a switch. Oh, that looked weird. Good job not loading the picture. Um, <laughs> get the Poison Glade, which is really, really helpful. And I decided to stay in, knowing that I can live as a headbutt and expecting a bulk up, to be honest. Um, so I just fire off, pick this not loading again. Good job, Showdown. Um, <laughs> fire off a Moonblast, which does a decent chunk at the special attack drop. That does not matter. And at this point, I was like, he's not going to go for inside a headbutt. I'm not sure why I thought that, because as you can see on my team, I have no resistance. Um, I was like, he's not going to go for the headbutt. I can just stay in and kill him off. Of course he goes for the headbutt. Stupid. And I could have killed him, but I got flinched. Um, that's really annoying, but hey, Galate is at least low enough, no matter what he does, even if he goes for Drain, drain Punch, which he does, um, to the point where Primer can come, come in and kill it with a close combat even, uh, because looking at his team, except for, except for the thing and the dead Zatu, he has no resistances to close combat, so I can just fire off one and be happy. So, that's exactly what I do, bring in Primer, click close combat, Galate goes down, and that's a huge threat gone. Um, his two psychic types, his two fighting resistances are gone, which means uh, Galate and Primer can have more fun. Lantern comes in, uh, it's slightly annoying to my team at this point, uh, but Glade can still beat it. Uh, but he just, of course, makes still the safe play angle for Volt Switch. And Glade is out here. Uh, he brings in Kangaskhan, and at this point I was considering just going straight for the Drain Punch. Um, but I had no real reason to. But I was still thinking about it, uh, which is actually important because he does pull the switch into Lilligan, expecting my right on. Uh, and I make that switch because it's my safe. It play. I can't mess around with the Kangaskhan. Um, so yeah, he uh, gets that play right, but I can just go back in the Glade because I don't want anything to be put to sleep and I know I can lift two Giga Drains uh, because I'm so specially bulky. And that does a lot. He's not Life Orb, which made me think he might be sashed, which could be kind of scary. Uh, but he goes for another Giga Drain. I could break it, but I get paralyzed. So at this point, if the thing is sashed and has HP Rock or some other hidden power that can kill Fletchina, I have a problem, but uh, I bring in Fletchina, and last time I brought in Fletchina on Galate, that was back then, um, that was a weird sentence, good, good job Charlie. Um I went for Acrobatics, and he just got a free switch into his Caracosta. I'm expecting him to predict me to go for something else, expecting his Caracosta, or Lantern of course, um, but I didn't see a reason to uh, make that play, to switch out or predict anything of a will or something, uh, because Lilligan would just sweep me straight up. So yeah, I just go for the acrobatics, knock out the against. Thankfully, it's not sashed. It might be like Miracle Seed or something. Um, that's definitely an option. As he brings the Caracosta, Fletchina is not necessary at this point. He has this, which just completely walls it. Uh, Lantern, which takes it on decently well, and Kangaskhan, which can live in acrobatics. So uh, I just have to go for Will O Wisp to get some chip damage off on the Caracosta because I have nothing that can reliably kill it. Uh, he must the Rock Side, which is actually pretty good for me because that means more uh, thingy damage, burn damage. I go for Roost this time, maybe, I was like, maybe I can live ahead, crit skull, dead, dead, dead in a dodo, so, yay. <laughs> and now that he's burned, I can just safely bring in my Mantine, uh, I can eat up Rock Slide, and just go for skull, weaken the thing further to the point where Primer can potentially kill it with a Seed Bomb, uh, he goes for Toxic, which is fine by me, uh, Mantine is not doing a whole lot against him, uh, the rest of his team, so yeah, uh, this time I decided to, uh, decide to go for Defog, not sure why I didn't really have a reason to. Um, 
But hey, getting rocks off the field is nice. And he brings in man uh, pff, Lantern. And I know I can live a Volt Switch because I'm a fucking Mantine. And this is a fucking Lantern. <laughs> and I also have a Rhydon, so he might just predict that and go for Scald. Feeling Rhydon to have speed investment. And just coming in, be immune to Volt Switch and kill it with an Earthquake. Um, I don't have speed investment, so Lantern just speeds me. But I still decide to stay in because I want to get a Toxic off on the thing. Uh, because at this point it could potentially win him the game. But he just goes for Scald. Fine by me, I get health back. Um, and I decide to just stay in. I don't see a reason to switch out because I don't need Mantine necessarily. Um, and yeah, he continues continuously goes for Scald, expecting my Rada, not wanting to risk that. Uh, fine by me, this turn he will reveal the heal bell, which is kind of annoying. Excuse me. Because that means I don't get the chip damage off, but hey, uh, I continue to. I'm gonna continue to spam Scald <laughs> uh, Hopefully get a burn this turn Yep, yep, nope, nope, no burn, nope, not, not a thing uh, I live the Volt Switch, it does nothing because I'm a fucking Mantine uh, And he goes into Caracosta and thankfully I died, not thankfully, but I died to Poison which is nice uh, Because this means I can bring in my Primeape And this is where things start to get interesting This Caracosta is at around half HP and I have Seed Bomb and this is four times effective move. I know that's salt rock, but still, I was like, let's go for that. That, that should kill. Pretty uh, close. Well, um, close count probably won't, but C bomb will, right? Right? Nope. Nope. It's not even. Nope. Probably once again shows why it's such a shit man. <laughs> uh, he lives. Goes for skull. Thankfully, he doesn't get a burn, which means I still stand a chance at winning. He brings in Kangaskhan uh, to obviously live the C bomb because he knows that I'm scarfed. Uh, in Jedi World, like, this is why we don't use Primeape. He was like, at least not scarfed. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so he, he was pretty, he knew that I was scarfed. Um, so he can just definitely bring in Kangaskhan. <clears throat> and I think Fake Out Busaka will kill me from this range anyway. So, yeah. Um, but what I do this turn is, I still have a right on the back, and he has two water types. So his double switch is really, really obvious. Um, because I need my Primeape to, I kinda need my Primeape to win. Because right on on its own can beat these three. So, um, yeah, I'll show you what to pull the double. And I decide to predict that and just stay in, go for another seat bump, and tweet KO Lantern from this range, which works out perfectly in my favor. And I can just fire off another seat bump because it will kill this, it will kill Caracosta, which he decides to sack off. Um, that's, that's perfect because Lantern has the potential to outspeed right on, while I'm pretty sure Caracosta doesn't. Don't quote me on that. Um, and. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this turn I decided to make the switch into Rhydon because I didn't feel like making the same switch, uh, same play twice. So yeah, I pulled the switch into Rhydon as he pulls a double into Lantern, so he makes the play again. Um, but since I'm Spadef, as all fuck, <laughs> I am pretty sure I can live a Scald, and as long as I don't get burned, I should be fine. And I actually don't get burned by this skull. And look at right on taking that four times effective fit, 45, 54%, uh, and just knock him over an earthquake. Right on, you sexy fucking beast. I love you. Uh, he brings the Kangaskhan, goes for uh, fake out just to get some chip damage off. And <clears throat> at this point, it's pretty much my game. He reveals that he has earthquake and an aqua tail. Thankfully, that means I can get earthquake damage off. Uh, because he might be like a really bulky can can that can lift a close comment from this range. But now I can just bring Bram up. I can easily lift the sucker punch that he's gonna go for and finish him off with a close combat. That's a good game to dun da da <laughs> And yeah, I am I am proud of how I played this game. I played pretty well, uh, if I do say so myself. And yeah. Uh some short updates. I did something that won't go up. I won't go over that in another video. Never mind that, but um, PPL Week 9 will be up soon-ish, I hope. Oh, I had some issues. I had some motivation issues, frustration issues with the whole Pokemon thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I will be up. Don't worry. Don't you worry. And yeah. Uh, if you have any suggestions for team, because it's not, it's by far not perfect, uh, let me know, because I'm very willing to change this team up a bit. Is still not a really good team. It's like a decent team <laughs> that won against a good player. So, yeah, um, that's gonna be it. 15 minutes. I guess that's that's pretty decent. Thank you all for watching. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, leave some nudes. I will appreciate all three of those, and hopefully, see you guys next time. Goodbye.